Well, I guess we'll get started. Is there anything anybody feels like we need to talk about today? I think Caden should share because she has like tons of things she does. <laughs> I was just gonna say, I'm happy to see you and I just need the calm of talking to you guys because I get crazy in my head, so. Yeah, we all do. Yeah, I know. I was thinking about that. I'm like, I just want to get on and visit with my friends. <laughs> I don't even care yeah. what we're talking about. <laughs> Hi, buddy. He wants to show his bristle bot. Here, let's show him how it works. Come on the table. Zephyr's class at school did these, and they brought them home, and of course, Bo loved them. Oh, that's cool. How cute. I think we had something like that years ago and i'd forgotten about it these they had the little yes. nanobots yeah and this one this brush is a crazy brush it like makes it spin around and go this I'm way for a second and also, have cute little eyeballs on them and they, they shake yeah and there's another one but i can't find it where are you working on work those are so cool but I don't know what I'm going to do with these. So I'll probably make one of those, you know, square castles in them. Yeah. Cool. You can do yeah. so much stuff with cardboard. Yep. I can make my cardboard and I'm trying to use it, but then we will just throw in the trash. No. <laughs> Recycle that. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it's fun to make something out of it. And then when you're done, you just throw it in the trash. But it's fun to make it. Yeah. <laughs> My son was making all those axes last week, but they're all gone now. <laughs> I kept finding parts of our house that were suddenly chipped away at. So I was like, all right, well, we're done with axes. <laughs> Like the doorway of their bathroom and the posts outside just all these little places i'm like that wasn't there before so that was fun <laughs> so so much for primitive tool making <laughs> oh. I know. you're going on another big road trip this year <laughs> the gas is the way there holy moly no i want to so bad like it's everything in my power to like stay home like I just de I was determined to stay home this summer which is really hard for me I just want to go I just want to hop in my car and drive and just go see what we see <laughs> and then like stop when we're ready I just love it I love driving but yeah with gas the way it is we're almost at six dollars a gallon so I'm like well I don't think so <laughs> we're almost to five already that's just sick yeah yeah, Costco's our cheapest, and I got gas last night was five eighty nine, so it's no fun. Yeah, so even my mom, who lives twelve miles away, we're like, I'm not coming to your house, and she's like, Well, I'm not coming to your house. So. <laughs> I <don't> we can know. <laughs> yeah, so it's even even within town, it's like a lot. So anyway, self inflicted lockdown. <laughs> I know I'm like we're finally like we can you know things are all opened up but I don't we can't afford to go anywhere but anyway so I've been thinking a lot too like how do we go places without going places like that's the fun part yeah that's yeah so. without being on the computer all day virtually yeah. being there no rooms just get know. up it's really hard to limit the screen get yeah off. I've been trying to make our backyard somewhere where we want to be. And I've, I've, yeah, I got some chairs and some, we have hammocks now. And I've been working on my garden, but I don't know. It's just so fun to go places. <laughs> I know. It is. See new things. Everyone seems to get along better when you're like out somewhere new and it's just easier. But yeah, we've been trying the same thing to get our backyard ready but it's like a construction zone right now because we took all the grass out to get ready for the pool and we took oh, our playground pretty? down so we did not an in-ground pool we just did oh, like no. the wow. no we're just ghetto and put like the above ground pool out there. 
so we have that but that's a bigger headache than I thought because it's just green and we keep I go to like the pool store every day like okay here's another sample what am I supposed to put in it so it's just like all this money to try to keep it not green and today it's just green so I don't know so that's been kind of a pain and so we have no grass and like a pool that's not swimmable and I know and then we're we're building like putting putting brick steps in like from our you know patio up to our house where there was just like these temporary wooden ones so now there's like construction trying to get the brick figured out so yeah it's just a mess back there and it's hot so I don't know <laughs> we may just like take off and go to the beach for a while and just stay with family <laughs> over there <laughs> I don't know I don't blame you yeah so Lori suggested we talk about the same we did last week and to see how everyone's doing with that. We talked about slowing down and just changing things up for the summer. So it's kind of what we're already talking about. <laughs> how do we, how do we just slow down? I've been, I've been thinking, how do we focus on the good and kind of like ignore the annoying? <laughs> it's hard. I've been thinking about doing a media fast for a while. I mean, social media fast because I don't know. I, I need it. <laughs> I need to do that. And I've been thinking about, I don't know, I guess we just naturally start slowing down towards the summer with, um, with what I'm doing with the kids. Like I'm just not posting because I, it almost takes away from the week because I'm like, am I doing this just to post or am I doing this to have fun or, you know, I don't like that. I want to just do stuff because it's fun with my kids. But I found that we're actually reading more from the stories of all Marlene's books than we're doing. We're doing more of that than the other things, which is great. So there's not much to post, <laughs> but we're yeah. having a great time. So yeah, I'm not sure what I'm saying here. Just I, I feel the need to slow down. Yeah, I know what you're saying because I've been there where, yeah, I feel like I've been in that spot where, yeah, I'm doing things to post it or, uh, yeah, like what it's going to look like in pictures. Like, let's just make sure this all looks really good in the chat books. And then the kids will have memories to look back on rather than just being present and just enjoying it in the time. But I've thought about when I am doing that, I want to make sure that there's a way to like look back on that and still remember and not just have it go by and then forget that it happened. So I've been trying to write in my journal more and it's turned into just like a to-do list of things to write about. <laughs> I have to like batch journal, write. Like, okay, now I have these 12 things I've made note of that we've done that I want to write about because I didn't really take pictures. So I'm trying to work on my writing too as we go through. Or just limit yourself to um, like maybe one or two pictures to remember it by instead of yeah. 30, you know, it's like, Okay, every five steps turn around and smile you know it's just do one or two that will just trigger the memory and then add to your journal that's what i've actually been thinking about doing too because and my kids are constantly like, mom take the picture for the family slideshow because we do that every new year's eve that's what we we watch our year in review just and we laugh and we cry and and they love it so they're constantly saying do this for the slideshow but then i'm going okay well we do the slideshow but then we don't really ever go back to it. So now I want to do like a year journal. You know, use those pictures and like you said, write about it. And that way, that way we can print it off and we have a physical copy for them to just go and look at it when it's sitting on the table. And so it's not just something we do once a year, but print it after the new year slideshow. So it's fun and then they can review it afterwards. But yeah, I've been thinking a lot about journaling lately the family history thing I've been working on that and there's like all these stories and I'm like oh I don't have much they're gonna wonder what happened to me <laughs> then, what was this picture about what was that picture about you need to actually write it down and tell people what was going on in those pictures if they're not obvious you know to everybody else yeah I think we're leaving behind a lot more than we think we are as far as a record keeping of our lives because like my great grandma I have like five journal entries from her and to me that's like amazing like like there's not a lot but that little bit 
is so cool to me. And I've read it over and over again, just the like day in and day out of her lives of like going to work and she had a baby and then deciding to stay home and all these cute little things that she wrote about, but there wasn't much. She wrote in her journal like a half dozen times that we know of that we have. And so I think we've all written more than that and we have way more pictures than generations before us. Like we're leaving a huge record even though it feels like, oh, I haven't done that. I haven't written my, my personal record. I think we are doing more than we think we are. But yeah, it's always still a goal to keep record and write down what's happening in the pictures. Yeah, that's why I love chapbooks. I don't know if you guys do chapbooks. They're kind of like, you don't have to fuss with it. Although I started it when I was doing more Instagram. So then you post Instagram and it automatically goes into a little book and it puts your caption and your photo in there. And then it, every 60 pictures, it just prints it out and sends it to you. So I didn't have to put any effort, but, but now that I'm not really posting to Instagram, I have to go post, I have to put them right into chat books and it's a little more effort. But. Hey, Emily. So yeah, keeping record of the things we're doing. I forgot what we were talking about when we got off on that. summer slowdown but it's a good it's a good goal for your summer because it does get you to slow down and to sit and remember and write and you're not running around and it's good for your kids to help too and just feel like a family journal because we would all remember different you know pieces so maybe that's good as a family style journal um a friend of mine he went on a road trip and with his family and um he kept a blog about it all for everybody to catch up on. And at the end, he they'd ask every single member of their family, what was the rose and what was the thorn of this part of the trip, you know? And I was like, oh, that's a funny way to think about it. Cause what was a, you know, a pain to me for that part of the trip? The other kids were like, that was the best part, you know? It's like, oh, it's always the worst for the mom. <laughs> I know, I, I see your question seven and we're gonna talk about that. Cause I think that's a good idea too. She talks about, how do you encourage your kids to keep your journal? But on Lindsay's note, I've been listening to these podcasts about making a bucket list for the summer and for each season. And so we, as a family, we made a bucket list, but then they suggested asking your kids, because obviously we're not going to get to the whole bucket list, asking each kid, what is the most important one on this list for you? But yeah, I'm a little nervous to ask my kids because I'm afraid they're going to be like, you know, a really expensive amusement park that we put on there or... <laughs> You know, something I don't really want to do, but I should do if it's important to them. So I was going to ask them that later, looking at our bucket list, which one is their most, would be the most important if we like finish the summer, that would be the one that they would want to do the most. But all right. So Seven asked, any advice on encouraging kids to keep a journal? So for us, um, I only have a couple of kids that can write. <laughs> my um 11 year old and my 13 year old and my 13 year old is the only one that does it and i just encourage i just like really keep it simple and just say hey you guys should write in your journals don't forget to write in your journals and i'll write in mine so they see me writing in mine and that's about it so that's all i do to encourage <laughs> if they if they do it great if not i don't know what else um Although I do have some writing prompt ones for my little kids that are like draw a picture of your favorite part of the day or um, it gives them something to write about, like pretend you're on the moon, you know, write about that. So those are fun for the little kids. Yeah, I was going to comment on that too. It doesn't have to be all writing because if they, if they'd rather just draw, draw what our day look like. Nice mustache, Ruby. Um, yeah, just draw about your day. And then they may, it may prompt them to write a little bit about it if they don't if the picture's not obvious as to what it is, just be like, hey, could you tell me a little bit about that? And just jot it down for me. If you just say jot it down, then they be, might be more inclined to write it, but. Yeah. Um, when I was little, I'd spend the summer with my, sorry, kids, spend the summer with my grandma and she would keep a journal for me. So like when I was five, I have a journal and she would just say, okay, what did we do today? And I would tell her and she would write down what I would say. That was fun. That reminds me, so I really like these little books that have half 
half page for words and half page for pictures. So that you could probably do something like that where you put a different decorate the cover, you know, and then they draw a picture and then you could write down what they did. I think I want to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Writing it down for them is just as good because it's their thoughts, their words. And if they can't quite write it yet or don't know how to spell it, it's totally fine to write it for them. Hi. Wait a minute. Um, we have, I have a journal like this for each of my kids. How do I, hang on. Um, so I write in blue and then ask, ask a question and then they write in a different color and ask me a question. And then we just go back and forth when we get to it. Um, and usually it's me that holds it up. They're like, wait, wait, why have you written in it? But I also like this. Um, one question a day journal for kids. And it just has a place for the date and a day number. And then it has a question. And some of them are silly. Some of them are serious. Would you prefer to have long or short hair or why? What do you like to do when it's outside? What's something you want to learn more about? What is interesting about it to you? Um, so when I'm asking questions in this journal, I take it from this journal oftentimes. Um, and it just kind of keeps the dialogue open. And oftentimes it'll just be like, tell me about your day is my, my question or prompt for them and they'll race. But that is, uh, I'm not much of a journaler. I never have been. And so that's kind of what works for us. We have tears over here. <laughs> I love that, Melissa. I've seen those before where you write back and forth. I've wanted to start one of those, but I haven't yet. That's kind of fun. What was the 360 journal? Who shared that was it, Melissa? Oh, thank you, Cadence, for posting that. That's the one question today. See, I love stuff like that because then you don't have to think about what to write and the kids don't have to think about, you know, too much. They just get to answer a fun question. And it's still showing, like, you get a record of their little personalities and um, the, what they thought of and how they thought when they were little and at that time. I think it's funny sometimes just to write it how they say it. Yes. Um, I had Anna... We were working on a father's a birthday card for my husband. And I, she's like, can you just write my words? And I was like, all right. And all she says is, happy birthday. Thanks for being useful to Anna. And that's all she wanted to say. And I was like, I'm going to write that exactly how. And now every time that pops back up, I crack up because I'm like, that's exactly how she wanted it written was thanks for being useful to Anna. And <laughs> it was like, so if you alter their words, it doesn't always come across their personalities. You kind of miss out. So you kind of just want to write it how they say it. I mean, as they get older, they can obviously write it themselves and correct themselves grammarly wise. But when they're little, write it the way they say it. It's just funny. Yes. I remember reading about narration when I was studying Charlotte Mason when Sarah was little. And so the couple of times that I did do it, that was, those are like my favorite things I saved from her because we would read a book and then I would ask her to narrate it to me and I would like type it out or write it out exactly how she would tell me and she would like retell the story. And it's, yeah, it's so cute the way she would say it. Like they use, they like use she and her, you know, the wrong way. Like they would use their little pronouns. For, I don't know, it was just so cute. Yeah, the way they retell a story when they're five. <laughs> Oh. oh, that's a good idea. Seven says she records the audio, so she does the narrations. And then the kids listen to it, so they get to listen to themselves telling the story back. That is so cute. Melissa says, we also have our kids illustrate the scriptures that we read in a set of journaling scriptures. That's a good idea, too. I think that's a good place to start with journaling is scripture journaling. Um, just a second. Yeah. 
so here's my here's my question on journaling i am not a big journal reader and so i'm like i have different times i've tried to start journaling or different things like that but i taught a journaling class a few months ago and i was asked to teach a journaling class and i just laughed because i was like i don't journal and I realized that I had kept a journal for most of high school and I didn't even realize it. And I've been hauling it around for 15 plus years and had never even looked at it. Didn't even realize I had it. And I'm, I'm not one to go back and look at it. I, so part of me is like, okay, I'm documenting stuff, but I don't go back and look at my pictures. I literally have never gone back and looked at pictures of my kids when they're babies or whatnot, besides the few that are like on my phone or on Facebook. Um, or on our wall. Like, I just don't go back and like reminisce through all of our pictures or stuff like that. And so part of me is like, why am I doing this? Because I never, ever, ever look at it. So any thoughts on that? Sorry guys. <laughs> Thanks, Melissa. Yeah, I, it's funny to go back and read journals that I don't even remember writing. I've done the same thing. Um, so I've tried to go back in my old journals and type them up so that it's all typed also. Also, I tend to like start a journal and then I find another cute journal. So I start that one <laughs> and I find a cuter one. So I start that one. So that's why I've also tried to consolidate them all into like, digital files instead of a bunch of books half written. In. All right. A good idea to journal, not just for posterity, but it's also just, I mean, if you're really journaling with the thought of writing down during like times of your trials and then going back and saying this is how this was this prayer was answered or you know how I came through it because just like when we read the scriptures I mean we're reading their account of it as well how you know their trial and then how they came through it and how the Lord assisted them I mean sometimes our posterity might relate more to us if they can see the trials that we went through and how we overcame them just because we're a real person to them, we're a tangible person. Um, so maybe having that in mind when you do it, I don't know, just thought. Sorry, I keep getting interrupted. But you were talking about like, um, so I'm like, hold on, Max, I can't hear to even like respond back. But um, like the prayer journaling, that Brooke Snow has been talking about. So I've been trying to do that too in my journal, like write a question that I would pray about. And sometimes I don't even actually pray about it. I just like, it's in my journal and that's my question to Heavenly Father. And then if I get an answer, I try to go back and write the answer in there as soon as I recognize it. But I like that it's just, yeah, sometimes it's just for our personal growth. But you were talking about, right? Like um, writing about, blessings and trials and different things and I feel I find myself a lot of times writing sort of like to my daughters like this may help them when they get to this point or I can look back on it when they're having the same trial and go okay how did I feel in that because I know I'm going to forget by the time I'm a grandma <laughs> I'm not going to remember how it felt to go through that particular time so I'm kind of writing it for reference for myself later I found it was um, easier for me if I wrote it like a letter, like Lindsay was saying to someone. So I made up a person and I would address it to them and I would write. And then over time, it's gotten easier to write. And what I've realized too is that as I've listened to Marlene's um, things about keeping a notebook is that it's okay if I don't journal every day 
when something strikes me that I want to record, it's okay if that's when I when I journal. Not to beat myself up about it because I'm not writing every single day. I'm glad you reminded me of that, Emily. I forgot that I had made up a person too when I was younger and I would write. I think her name was Madeline and I just like invented a friend and some my journals just a minute babe. my journals were like dear madeline and then i would just write to her but she was just my journal's name and then i think i got another journal and named that one a different name so that the journal had a name and she was my friend <laughs> but i totally forgot about that <laughs> oh, i love it so that helps that we're like writing to somebody and letting them know what's going on in our lives it's kind of a fun way to write it No, and I like that you, you said you don't journal every day. It's not like everything in your life, every single day has these moments that you need to record because it's like today I did laundry. You know, it was funny because a couple of years ago, my mom had given us all a thumb drive for Christmas and it was just copies of all of my dad's journals that she found after he passed away. And they were just little snippets, but at the end of every one, he's like, and I went to bed at 1030 and I went to bed at 930 and I went to bed and we're like, why did he put that in there every single day? What, who cares what time he went to bed? But for some reason, that's, that's how we ended it. And I went to bed at 930. And so, but some of the days there wasn't anything going on, but he just wanted to write something. And sometimes it was just one other sentence plus the time he went to bed. So yeah, it doesn't need to be a daily thing because there isn't always something daily that's going to strike you. So I like, I like that because that takes a lot of pressure off of you going, oh, it's just one more thing I have to do today. No, it's just do it when you feel prompted to do it. Exactly. Yeah. I remember having that feeling of feeling like I needed to do it every day and every day going, man, I didn't do it. I even had it in my bullet journal at one point, like write my journal. And then yeah, then when I wouldn't do it and I didn't get to cross it off, then I felt all stressed out, but I've moved past that. So I hope we can all remember that. You don't have to do it every day. Um, yeah. Okay, my other question is, what are you guys reading right now? <laughs> I'm reading a really, really good book and it feels so good to be like drawn into this book and like into the story, into the characters. I haven't done that since Freckles like months ago. So it's been fun. Oh, you're finally reading Little Men. I'm so excited. That has been like I tell people when they like are like, oh my gosh, I'm struggling with my boys. Like, what do I do? I don't even recommend a parenting book. I'm like, read Little Men. And even if you have like hyperactive little girls, it works too. <laughs> like, just any like, I just feel like listen, like, like reading about how Joe and Mr. Bear, like how they respond to the different situations. I'm like, that's the best parenting advice I've ever read. <laughs> right? So good. You're like, oh, I could do that in that situation. I could encourage this instead of, you know, saying no to this or whatever. It's just so good. I love you it. You don't have to remember some parenting technique. You just remember the story and it's so beautiful. Yeah. Yep. It's not easy to remember because you love it. My dog's crying at me now. There you go. Um, yeah, it helps. It makes it easier to remember and easier to implement when it's not just some like, you know, instruction. It's like you've seen it. Like I, you've seen them parents, and you're like, oh, that looks good. I do that with movies too. Certain movies you'll watch or TV shows, you'll watch how the parents respond to a situation, and I'm like, wow, that's really good. I know, I know what that looks like. So anyway, I feel like I get that out of books a lot. Yeah, it's like a feeling. You feel it, and you want to be that person, like Kaden said. See if I missed anything. Lindsay just finished Secret Garden. I love that one. Ida was reading that one too a couple months ago. Can you, oh, I went back up. Melissa asked, can you rep, record keep too much? I don't think so. I don't think you can like, no. Write everything down you want to write down. It'll be amazing to your posterity. They're like, holy cow. There's like novels here that grandma wrote. That'd be so cool. Um, yeah, I get that loud stuff. 
in the background. <laughs> um, so I've been reading The Last Bookshop in London. And it's so funny because I checked it out from the library because it was at the top of my to read list. And I just wasn't having the time and other people were recommending other books. And I was like, maybe I shouldn't be reading this book right now. I'll try to read like Keeper of the Bees or something like Lori was telling me about that one. I was just need to read other books. And as soon as I returned it to the library, like literally 30 minutes later, Lori was like, I think we, re we need to read The Last Bookshop in London because it was like posted on the Well-Educated Heart page. And then I listened to Read Aloud Revival podcast and they were like, so for Mama Book Club this summer, we're reading The Last Bookshop in London. And I was like, okay, so I need to read that book. It was like, yeah, Heavenly Father's way of being like, no, 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 you were supposed to read that book. So I looked for it on Kindle and it was too expensive. And um, I looked like at my local used bookstore and I, I, I tried to get it right back from the library and it was already gone. And like holds are like for months out so I was like okay I can't get the book back what am I supposed to do again, like a day later and it was $2.99 for Kindle so I was like great so I bought it bought one for me bought one for Lori <laughs> and I think she already finished it but you just started it too I'm on chapter five but like as soon as I sent it to Lori she was done and I am not a fast reader so it like put all this pressure on me like oh my gosh I gotta finish it but, so it has it's been kind of good because then I like read every chance I get so I'm even like reading I have it on my kindle so I even read like between like the stoplights <laughs> it's been so good and I'm looking up things that I didn't know like they carry around these gas mask boxes you know preparing for world war ii and I thought what does that look like so I had to look up a picture of it and it's so fun it's just it reminds me about how like you know how fun it is to learn through books and experience London right at the beginning of World War II, like I'm there. It's kind of cool. Oh, how to win friends and influence people. I've heard that's a really good one, Emily. I've read one that I don't know if it's similar or not, because I've heard of this one, but I read um, How to Talk to People. I read that when I was in college and it was really, really good. What is um, the last bookshop in London? I'll put it in there. I hope Lori doesn't put this one on YouTube. We're like all over the place. <laughs> I've never watched the YouTube channel. Either I'm like here or I'm not. I've never gone to watch the videos on YouTube. I don't so. like watching myself on that. <laughs> No, I can't watch myself. So I think that's fun that people get on there and they get to like be part of our conversation later. But yeah. Yeah. If you guys are watching this and you've never been part of our conversation, just get on here live. <laughs> it's way more fun. <laughs> or they watch us and they're like, just kidding. I would never get on that call live. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's the thing. Oh. Or there's parts of the video that all of a sudden show up on Facebook. And I'm like, I don't remember even saying that. And why didn't she ask for my permission to post that on Facebook? The YouTube was and bad. I didn't do my hair that day or something <laughs> like. Or when she took the snapshot of the quilt and we're like, everyone's like, <laughs> what's wrong with you? Just tell us to smile. <laughs> Your quilt looks funny. Okay. Just <laughs> it's like a beginner sewer. Just make us smile. <laughs> I know. Oh, Lindsay, how's the quilting going? Oh, I haven't even started it. It's been nuts. Yeah. That I 900 right. seminary models to get through. I don't have time to sit and quilt this summer. Mm -hmm. it's, so cool. it's been on the back burner all of a sudden. And then my husband's leaving in, what, four weeks to go to Maine. So we're trying to make sure all the to-do things for him before he goes. Like we have to build a fence now all of a sudden because ours decided it didn't want to stand up anymore. So we just have a lot of to-dos and then I have a lot of to-dos because I have to take home school with me. So I have to make sure that I have everything bought and here to go with us. So that'll be fine. We're fine. <laughs> what are you doing in Maine? Oh, my husband took a traveling nurse practitioner job. So that's his first posting. So we're going up there. Wow. who knows where we'll go after that but we'll have stints between 
so we can come home and just be home for a while and then he'll we'll go to the next one so there's some in Washington I was going to message you and ask you where you are <laughs> I know I've looked up Cadence where she's at because it's on the way to my dad's house and my sister's up there. So my dad's in Edmonds, is that what it's called? And then my sister's now in, she's not in Bellingham, my aunt's in Bellingham. So they're up further, but where's my sister live now? She's right on this side of the border. I can't think of the name, but anyway, um, yeah. I've like thought the next time I go to Washington, yeah, she's in Linden. Yeah, that's where she's at. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's it. <laughs> so she's there now and they just bought a house. So anyway, so I've thought, yeah, next time I head up there, I'm totally going to stop and see Cadence. Um, so Lindsay, I was thinking when you were talking about packing up homeschool, I thought, how great is that that Marlene has all of these books digitally? And I've talked to a few moms recently that are new to Well-Educated Heart, and they're like, so should I buy the books? I'm like, like if you want to, but honestly, I use the digital copies more than I use my physical copies. I don't know why. It's just so much easier when we're sitting on the couch to not get up and go get it, but just to be like, here, let's just, let me just open it and start reading. I don't know. I used to be a physical copy kind of girl and I'm becoming more and more, more and more um, digital. I don't know. But I'm glad I have the copies in case, you know, everything digital goes away. Oh, I was listening, like I said, to the Read Aloud Revival podcast, and I liked the question. Okay, I'm not going to play catch anymore. <laughs> I was, I liked the question that they asked. They were like, okay, so preparing for summer, like, and do this with each season. I think we may have even talked about this last week. To ask yourself, okay, at the end of summer, what would I be, like, really glad that we made time for? Like, what's the one thing that I'd be like, oh, I'm so glad we made time for that? So I've been thinking about that a lot, and I was just wondering what your guys' answers would be to that. Um, the summer, <laughs> just, I am, uh, I'm not a, I'm not a summer fan. We've had this conversation. So all you haters don't send me emails. Okay. I don't love summer. Um, but just making time to go to the pool and be okay being at the pool, you know, just because my kids love it and they're only gonna, and they may love it for their childhood. I loved it when I was a kid, but, um, just being there for them. And just keeping that for me, that's what I'm, I'm glad I'm making time to do stuff with them that they enjoy, even if I don't enjoy it. Yeah, I need to be better about that. I feel like I've been really selfish this summer. Like you guys, I don't want to do that, <laughs> but I need to make time to do the things so that they're happy and that they look back on this with fond memories. Oh, that's cool. Seven K. So Cadence was asking how you save your spot. Oh, you save your spot when you use the iPad or computer um, to read. But issue, I guess, saves your spot. So I was just trying to type in an answer. I haven't quite figured that out yet either. So I'm glad Seven said that. We usually just read a short story, like start to finish, and then and then we're done. And I really like the biblio guides thing, so we can look up a picture book and read the picture book, and then we're done. Um, so I haven't figured out how to save a spot yet. So issue app will save your spot. That's awesome. And I love that issue app. It's really cool because it's just it's so user friendly, friendly and it's pretty. And I found other books in there too um, that are in the public domain that are just on there other than the Well-Educated Heart books. So that's my go-to now when I'm looking for a book that I can't find anywhere else. I've looked on there and found it. Um, I know, so I haven't quite figured out my answer to like, okay, at the end of the summer, I wanna look back and be like, I'm really glad that we did that. I don't know. 
what it would be. So I don't know. <laughs> like for me, I just keep thinking of stuff for myself. Like I'm really glad that I read all the books that I did. And lately I feel like when I do read and I'm just busy reading, my kids find things to do. And it just seems like it's just a lot calmer and more peaceful around here. So I think that might be the key for us. And then lots of time in the pool. <laughs> All right, we got five minutes left. So we need to wrap up. Anybody have anything else they want to share that they're doing this summer or ways that they're slowing down or creating memories or recording memories, all the things we've talked about today? So we're where we live in the summer at least there's only well year round there's like two in indoor options for socializing for free there's like the library and a little museum pretty much and then everything else would be like hey like the bowling alley or museums or stuff but um we do have a couple museums but my kids can only go to like the same one museum without a kid's you know with like a kid's section that's like four feet by five feet <laughs> so often. Um, so we have a lot of outdoor stuff, but it just gets too hot to be like hiking all the time with kids in the summer by yourself. I can't carry enough water for my kids to be hiking by ourselves in the heat. And so I feel like a lot of our stuff is like, we'll go to the park in, early in the morning or in the evening. And then it's just, what can we do at home? What can we do to be indoors and cool during the day? Um, so yeah, we don't live in a place where there's lots of cool outdoor things in the summer. So a lot of our stuff is what can we do at home or what can we do early in the morning? Yeah, I definitely did not spell things right. But... <laughs> yeah, I don't know if where you guys live, the libraries do like summer programs, but that's my kids look forward to that. Um, I'm really, I like cannot do two things at once. I'm like talking and then I'm like, oh chat, squirrel. Okay. Um, yeah, my kids look forward to schools here. Even this is probably just a California thing. I don't know. Maybe you guys just have the school lunches, but actually I think it is a federal program. So it should be everywhere, but the schools in our area will do like free school breakfast and free school lunch. And my kids love doing that. The lunch isn't like the food's not even that great. It's like cafeteria. I don't know. It's just weird prepackaged um yeah but the parents aren't allowed to eat it anyway but anyway my kids love like having those things to go do and going to the library and they do like there's a storyteller coming to our library at the end of the month that's like on youtube he's like um jim cogan apparently he's like the bill nye of history he like he's really fun with history so they're excited to do that yeah so i like finding those little free programs in town at the library or wherever to go check out All right, guys, this was fun. I feel like we should do these every now and then, like, a, let's just get on and talk about our day. I guess that's what Marco Polo is, but I like the live um, responses a little bit better than Marco Polo and not, you know, not getting anything right away. Oh, Cadence, that sounds lovely. I wanna go hiking. It's, it's too cool here. I mean, cold, like, I keep waiting for it to warm up. When is summer going to be here? <laughs> it just doesn't come. <laughs> no, it's so hot here. It's supposed to be 104 tomorrow. And they planned our Pioneer Day celebration for tomorrow because July 24th, it's usually a lot hotter. Well, it's funny because tomorrow it's going to be 104, which is probably going to be hotter than July 24th. So we also do a lot of our like church camps all throughout July. Tomorrow's Pioneer Day here. So yeah, 104 and we'll be outside. It's gonna be hot. So I wish it was 60, 70. Although I feel like there's like a happy medium, like could it just be like 80 or 85 or something? Yeah, Lindsay knows all about the desert heat. It was even hotter in Arizona where you were. So 
this is three weeks ago and today it's 97. Yeah, I can't even imagine your plants. Like when you're told to plant it after like the last freeze and then you don't know when that'll be. Here, there is no freeze. <laughs> like, what does that mean to freeze up? Like a freeze, I don't even know. Yeah, my sister told me it's supposed to be 114 in Phoenix this weekend. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Have fun. <laughs> That's why I'm here. So when the sun comes out, I'm like, oh. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I would die. We have webbed feet out here. <laughs> That's, I think it's, you always want what you don't have, right? So I'm like, that sounds so nice, but you probably, yeah wish I don't know everyone wishes it was a little bit more like what you know they don't have well, we all should be happy huh? I know in seven where are you? aren't you in um Hawaii no she said Linden Utah oh Linden <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> Linden Utah is not Hawaii I was thinking she was in Hawaii or like <laughs> from Hawaii or something I don't know where I was getting Hawaii from it was oh. before moving to Utah yeah I thought you were. Well, Utah's nice too. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's gonna be cold in Maine. Okay. Anyway, we better go. I could chat with you guys all day, but this Thank one is ready to move on and do something else. <laughs> all right, you wanna tell them all bye? Bye. Bye, Ruby. Bye. Bye. bye.